like any of the other bottled beers that have to be heated. Now, I can't show you our beer, but I can show you our label. Any Standard Oil dealer can show you many new ways to use your Standard Oil credit card. With all these services on one credit card, isn't it natural to lean towards Standard Oil? Got one? Use it. You expect more from Standard, and you get it. Same cellist Pablo Casal visits tomorrow at 4. The next two hours and one half are in living color on Channel 5. Good evening. Another snowstorm caught Chicago by the surprise this evening. Four inches of snow fell within one hour in some of the northwestern suburbs. Uh, the depth of more than five inches is common at the moment. But NBC weather forecaster Harry Volkman says the worst is now over. Chicago's trains and buses are operating nearly on schedule. O'Hare Airport closed at 6 o'clock, but resumed partial operation about a half an hour ago. Heavy winds are drifting some highways closed. Visibility is poor. Various reports indicate dozens of cars stalled on the expressways. And officials request emergency travel only on expressways, at least until midnight. Snow removal crews are working, and part of the outer drive is closed now for snow removal. Interstate 90, US 30, and US 41 are closed in northwest Indiana. School closings, if any, will be announced tomorrow morning on WMAQ Radio. The city of Chicago warned a few moments ago that all cars that are stalled now that are not moved from major streets and bus routes immediately will be towed away. During tonight's storm, a CTA elevated train traveling at about 10 miles an hour hit the rear of another train at the Central Park station on the west side. Three persons suffered minor injuries. The CTA says that it hopes to have normal service tomorrow morning. Harry Volkman will have more on the weather later. This is the NBC News Night Report with Floyd Calvert. This portion presented in part by American Airlines. Nancy doesn't travel very much. She's busy enough showing her grandson how a little jar of earth becomes a little jar of life. But Nancy will be flying to California next week, and she might like to know it took American 14 years to train her captain. Nancy in mind when we set up American's pilot program. We build American Airlines for the professional traveler who flies up to 50 times a year. When you fly as much as the presidents of DuPont or U.S. Rubber, you want everything as smooth as glass. And that's why there'll be an old pro up front next week when Nancy's sitting in back. You'll love it. The operation of the Cook County Hospital returned to normal this evening after nurses voted to call off a strike they had scheduled for this coming weekend. The unanimous unconditional vote by 250 nurses came after the county board promised earlier today to give the nurses more money and benefits retroactive to last October. The spokesman for the nurses, Mrs. Joyce Taylor, told reporter Fred Thomas she feels it's unfortunate the nurses had to resort to a strike threat. Uh, there are still many unmet needs at County Hospital that our agreement will only take care of ours, but the medical staff and the hospital administration and their problems with equipment and supplies and all of these things that are still unmet. Uh, but all of the efforts of the various groups in the hospital to correct these problems have not really availed. I think we have made the first breakthrough, and it was by a threat of a strike. Uh, it's unfortunate that it had to be this way. Uh, we feel very strongly that there ought to be some better way of solving problems so that service to patients would not be interrupted. Earlier, the county board president, Richard Ogilvy, he's a Republican, ordered hospital operations gradually reduced to prepare for the weekend strike. Today, when Democrats on the board claimed Ogilvy didn't have that power or authority, Ogilvy adjourned the board meeting and the Republican members walked out. 
What is described as the largest military operation of the South Vietnamese War got underway about 75 miles northwest of Saigon today. 50,000 Allied troops are involved. Their objective is to crush the communist main stronghold in that area and trap an entire division of communist troops. The operation was launched in secret before dawn on Wednesday. Men of the 173rd Airborne Brigade were loaded aboard their planes and took off. They had been told just 24 hours earlier that they would see action, but they weren't told where. For most, it was their first drop into an action zone. Their job was to jump into war zone C near the Cambodian border and stop the communists from escaping into Cambodia. Before the paratroopers went in, B-52 jet bombers made four raids over the area, and light planes flew 416 missions, dropping hundreds of tons of explosives. 750 paratroopers took part in this jump, one of the largest paratroop operations since the Korean War. First man out of the plane was Brigadier General John Dean, Jr., the commander of the 173rd. While that unit went in by parachute, other men were moved in aboard 250 helicopters, and still others moved in on foot and in armored columns. U.S. casualties so far have been described as very light. That committee that's been investigating the conduct of Representative Adam Clayton Powell said today that Powell was guilty of gross misconduct. It recommended stiff punishment, but it said that Powell should not be barred from taking his seat in the Congress. The recommendation was read by the committee chairman, Representative Emanuel Teller, and points two and three are the ones that are going to hurt. But upon taking the oath as a member of the 90th Congress, the said Adam Clayton Powell be brought to the bar of the House in the custody of the sergeant of the House and be there publicly censured by the Speaker in the name of the House. Three, that Adam Clayton Powell and his punishment pay to the clerk of the House to be disposed of by him according to law $40,000. The sergeant of arms of the House is directed to deduct $1,000 per month from the salary otherwise due said Adam Clayton Powell, and pay the same to the said clerk, said deductions to continue while any salary is due the said Adam Clayton Powell as a member of the House of Representatives until said $40,000 is fully paid. Powell has charged that he came under attack because he is a Negro, but Seller said that is not the case. Some will say we went too far. Some will say we did not go far enough. But this is certain. We acted without fear or fear. Our decision is not the result of any emotion, any hysteria, any prejudice, and certainly not the result of any racism, as has been charged in some quarters. That charge is utterly fallacious. The full House is to vote on the committee's recommendations next Wednesday. Workers at the General Motors plant in Mansfield, Ohio, ended their wildcat strike today, but it uh, wasn't ended soon enough. GM has laid off 174,000 workers because of the parts shortage caused by the strike, and it says it will have to lay off even more tomorrow. That controversial New Orleans investigation into the assassination of President Kennedy continued today. Details in the day's sports news after the weather with Harry Volkman. Rice Krispies in your breakfast bowl. It's going to be a rice day today. Put your future 
Chicago at Bell Savings, where money grows faster at four and three quarter percent. Money in by the tenth earns from the first. Put your future in Bell Savings at the Weather Bell Corner, Monroe and Clark. Through the years, a quarter of a million people have. something different for a change. Try Salem. Salem refreshes your taste. Today's news, tomorrow's headlines at midnight on 5. The Weather with Harry Volkman, brought to you by Commonwealth Edison Company. And now, here's Chicago's professional meteorologist, Harry Volkman. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Del Clark. The weather sometimes will give us fits. And this was one of the worst fits of a weather type to a forecast that I've ever seen. I came out at 5 o'clock tonight with the expectation that we'd have little further snow. Well, it went a lot further than that as far as what developed. One of the most intense blizzards that I've ever been through occurred here early this evening. Now, this was worse than the January 26th storm while it lasted as far as wind intensity of snow and blowing and low temperature. This was really a blizzard. The other one was just a heavy snow because it wasn't cold enough. Well, a lot of these factors aren't so important, but it was a nightmare, a wild nightmare on those expressways for a while tonight. I was out there two hours myself, so I'm not one that's just talking about it looking through a window from a warm studio, although I am now, fortunately, but it's improved a lot outside. Now, what has happened is very intense whirlpool right over Chicago. It was a low over us. It was a low in the upper level. It was pillar of rotating air. Almost something biblical, you think, here. Arctic coal came in and caused a very intense, rapid condensation of moisture coming off the lake. And there was this intense lifting, convection currents, everything you want to call it, that caused a very intense development of snow that fell directly down. Then, of course, the winds took it and just whooshed it right across the city in this whirlpool of air. And you can't get much worse than that here or anywhere. The wind is out of the west-northwest at around 40 miles an hour still over the mart. We've had gusts up to 60, and they've diminished to an average speed at midway at 10 o'clock of 18 miles an hour. The visibility is still only a half mile at midway, and the temperature uh, ranges now from 13 in the loop on down to, uh, well, 12 at O'Hare and up as high as 15 at DuPage County. Now, we have a relative humidity 64% as the snow tapers off, and the barometer has been rising rapidly indicating again the slamming nature of the cold air. It has come in like a wall, and it pushed the air and the moisture, what little there was of it, up rapidly. Now, the snow was 4.9 inches at midway, between about 6.30 and 9. And the season's total now is 58.4 inches, only about 8 inches short of a record snowfall for any one season in the city of Chicago, a record that has stood since 1951 and 52. We'll take a brief look at the national picture and how the weather shapes up for the weekend right after this message. Electricity caused us today, you know, than it did many long years ago. Just a minute, little Bill. Ma'am? You say electricity cost less today because rates are going down? True, ma'am. Electricity is a bigger bargain than ever. Then how come my electric bill doesn't go down? It's because you're using more electricity and enjoying it more. Look at the things you use. An electric frying pan and an isolating fan and the thing that opens cans an all-electric garbage. Dryer, a washer, a color TV set, a toaster, freezer, radios, what did we forget? Percolator, vacuum cleaner, neuro tissue. You're living much better electrically. My electric hair dryer. You're living much better electrically. Little Bill. Right on the heels of this snow that's moving out now and has cleared at Milwaukee and the snow has just about stopped now at Rockford is sub-zero weather. It's down to zero now right almost to the corner of the state across northern Iowa, western Wisconsin. Ten below here in the Twin Cities. The sub-zero weather will move all the way down behind the clearing into Chicago by morning. And now they've got a revised forecast on temperature of 10 to 20 below tomorrow night. Here's the storm. It's a tight one, a small, intense whirl moving off east. It will affect northern Indiana and Ohio tomorrow morning and Pennsylvania and then into New York State, where they're just now getting out of the blizzard they had today in clear cold weather. 
Justin Flain is going to be with us for the weekend. Portland, Maine had 12 inches of snow in six hours today, more than we had tonight. Tonight, snow flurries, windy and colder, low 5 to 10 below, no further significant accumulations expected. While northwest winds 30 to 40 miles per hour, diminishing slowly, some gusts to 50. Mostly sunny, windy, very cold Friday with high 10 to 15, northwest 18 to 26 mile an hour winds. Friday night fair and very cold, low 10 to 20 below zero. Saturday fair with moderating temperatures in the afternoon, and that's the weather for Commonwealth Edison. Get Chicago's big snow, the 30... In New Orleans today, murder was ruled out in the death of David Ferry, a prime figure in District Attorney Jim Garrison's investigation into the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Garrison said that he is sure that he can prove the assassination was the result of a plot. And after Ferry was found dead yesterday, Garrison named him as a prime figure in his investigation. Well, today, another such prime figure in that investigation, David Lewis, went to Garrison's office for a private conference. Lewis is a so-called former private investigator. He was, uh, has supported Garrison's claim that a plot was involved in the assassination. And he says that he has given Garrison the names of four or five persons whom he says took part in that plot. After conferring today Garrison, he and said that Faree was not one of those four or five persons he thinks was involved. In Peoria, one more juror was tentatively seated in the Richard Speck murder trial, but another juror seated earlier was dismissed. So that still leaves just three who have been tentatively accepted by the state and the defense in jury selection that began four days ago. A demolition team of 35 men equipped with heavy cranes and trucks has begun clearing away the debris at McCormick Place in Chicago. They're pulling down portions of the building superstructure, which are in danger of collapse. One aim of their job is to make the area safe for inspectors. McCormick Place was badly damaged in that fire last month. The work taking place now won't be completed for weeks. The inspection teams will then have to determine the extent of the damage before plans for rebuilding the exposition hall can be completed. Two men who have played a prime role in investigating the Chicago Crime Syndicate in the last two years resigned today from the staff of U.S. Attorney Edward Hanrahan the two are David Shippers and Sam Batar, who will enter private law practice. Five of six men accused of extorting $100,000 from a suburban construction company appeared in federal court here today and pleaded innocent of the charges. They include Sam Battaglia, the reputed new head of the Chicago Crime Syndicate, North Lake Mayor Henry Neary, and North Lake Alderman Leo Shababi. Battaglia is to go on trial on April 17th, the others on May 1st, and all were released on bond after their appearance today. Len O'Connor looks at an unenviable record Chicago has chalked up after this. Here's one way to keep sandwiches fresh. Open 80 loaves of bread and throw the bread away. Cut the wrappers in half and you have 80 plastic bags. Bakers know bread stays fresher in but here's a better, cleaner way to get the same protection. Baggies Plastic Sandwich Bag. Made with the same materials by the same people who make plastic bread bags. So protect the freshness of your own sandwiches the same way bakers protect bread. Get baggies. Mrs. Henderson told us she judges the freshness of meat by its bright red color. So Baggies Plastic Bags asked her to make this home test. She stored a roast in the leading plastic wrap, foil, and baggies. Here's what she discovered only three days later. Mm hmm These two turn brown. But baggies? Why, it looks as fresh as the day I bought it. Yes, for a difference in freshness you can see. Store all your meats in baggies, food wrap, or jumbo. A year from now, if someone says, who was Robert Hanna, not one person in 10,000 will be able to reply. In the unofficial tabulations of the Chicago 
Crime Commission, Robert Hanna is the 1,000th victim of gangland murder in this area, the records beginning with the shooting up of a small fry character in January of 1919. The list that has been compiled by the Crime Commission is historically of interest, though, for only one reason. It serves as a guide to the popularity of the rackets during the past 38 years. In the beginning, it was vice, control of prostitution, with emphasis on the red light district that centered in the area of 22nd and Wabash. This attracted such trigger men as Scarface Al Capone, who found employment as bodyguard for a vice lord whose name was Big Jim Colosimo. Colosimo eventually was gunned down, but by this time the emphasis had shifted to alcohol cooking and the peddling of bootleg beer. The Taylor and Halstead area out on the west side, now dominated by the Chicago Circle campus, was an historic ground in the formative years of organized crime. The acrid odor of alcohol cooking permeated the place. The sound of gunfire was commonplace. The neighborhood shook frequently when this fellow's place was bombed or that fellow's place was bombed. The era of the gangs emerged from this. Capone, Moran, the terrible Tui gang, and forgotten hoodlums like Joe Saltus. There was big money to be made, and the men were willing to kill or get killed in their greed to make it. This was likewise the period, the 1920s, when homicidal struggles began to assert themselves in battles for control of unions and the beginning of a murderous fight for control of racetrack information, a fight that terminated in 1946 with the murder of a man whose name was James Reagan. Reagan was sort of a good guy who resisted the crime syndicate's effort, successful effort, we might say, to take over the business of disseminating horse race information from the tracks to the bookie joints here and elsewhere. Somewhere between the blood that flowed in the red light district and the assassinations that punctuated the power struggle for control of organized gambling, narcotics became and remains a big thing. Indeed, a narcotics racket involvement is blamed for the murder of Robert Hanna, who is number 1,000. Sprinkle in a few political scandals and murders, the graduation of syndicate bosses into quasi-legitimate business enterprises, introduce big deal defense attorneys, and the latter-day yearning for respectability of the elderly gangsters, and there it is, a quick picture of violent times, and I am one O'Connor. Don't let anything stop you from discovering the softness of Aurora. Two layers of softness. One layer of pretty pastel, the other purest white. Soft to the touch, softly scented too. The whole point is, Aurora is too soft for words. There, Gala's pretty borders are gone. But they aren't the only thing you buy a paper towel for anyway. You want a hard-working two-layer towel that soaks up spills and stays strong even when it's wet. The borders, they're just for fun. The important thing is, border to border, Gala's the hardest-working paper towel you can buy. And that's the real beauty of it. The University of Illinois will appeal yesterday's Big Ten ruling that it fire its head football and basketball coaches and an assistant basketball coach for unauthorized aid to athletes. The university claims that the punishment is simply too harsh. University President Dr. David Henry commented for NBC reporter Jay Newburn. We're simply looking at the, uh, at the cases, the human element involved. Uh, the, uh, the fact that these coaches have uh, been put on probation in mid-career is a very serious penalty, uh, and uh, we don't believe that... Um, uh, we, we believe we ought to be allowed to solve our own problem from here on out and make our own evaluation, uh, having uh, recognized the problem. Tonight, the entire 82-man football squad at the University of Illinois signed a petition supporting Coach Pete Elliott it will be presented to Dr. Henry tomorrow, asking him to retain Elliot as the coach. There is a report that another petition is being circulated by the alumni of the University of Illinois, calling for the university to pull out of the Big Ten if it refuses to ease up.
penalty that was ordered yesterday. In college basketball tonight, Tulsa beat Bradley 65 to 62. Denver leads Marquette 51-28 at the half. Providence leads Rhode Island 51-32 at the half. Notre Dame beat New York University 79 to 66. Houston beat West Texas 120 to 76. Just one game in professional basketball, Boston beat New York 122 to 117. And that, incidentally, was the Celtics' 17th straight win over the Knicks. They haven't lost to the Knicks since March of 1965. In hockey, Montreal and Boston played a 2-2 tie. Toronto beat Detroit 4-2. The Blackhawks are idle. Baseball slugger Hank Aaron signed his 1967 and 1968 contracts today with the Atlanta Braves. Aaron will get $100,000 for each year, and that is a record for the Braves. In Lawrence, Kansas tonight, uh, sophomore James Ryan a new indoor record for the half-mile run, one minute, 48 and three-tenths seconds, and this chopped seven-tenths of a second off the mark set just last Saturday by Tom Van Ruden. Prices closed mixed on Wall Street today. The Dow Jones Industrials gained two and two-thirds points. Rails were up a fraction. Utilities lost. The value of an average share of common stock rose six cents. Recap of the news and weather after this. There goes a flavor grabber. There's another flavor grabber. When you grab hold of an LMM, you grab hold of flavor. Good round flavor that's never sharp, never flat. When you grab hold of an LMM, you grab hold of flavor. Good round flavor through the white filter. Good round flavor you just can't get in any other cigarette. of an L&M. Be a flavor grabber. There's one thing I meant to bring out in the previous talking about all the rushing up air tonight earlier was so intense it was like a intense spring thunderstorm and we did have lightning and thunder. At least 250 people have called it. I observed that myself when I was out there and this oftentimes takes place in winter snowstorms but it had all the characteristics of like a white tornado that went through here. Sunny, windy, and cold for Friday is forecast now. The flurries tonight will taper off, but the serious blowing and drifting will continue throughout much of the night with lows about 10 below tonight and 10 to 20 below tomorrow night, and you see the highs there for the day, only 10 to 15 tomorrow. Floyd? Summarizing the news, emergency travel only ordered for Chicago's expressways tonight. Cars stalled, must be moved, or they will be towed away, and the CTA hopes to have normal operations in the morning. Cook County Hospital is back to normal. The threatened nurses strike uh, scheduled for Saturday has been called off. 50,000 allied troops taking part in a new drive against the communists 75 miles from Saigon. And the committee investigating Adam Clayton Powell has recommended that Powell be seated but censured. Finally, a man in East Providence, Rhode Island called the police recently with a complaint. Someone stole his three-car garage. <laughs> That's the news. Johnny Carson is next. Brotherhood is for everyone. Practice it every day, all year. Macmillan Shell, Buddy DeFranco, and Hank Bradford visit with Johnny Carson in color next on Channel 5. The NBC News Night Report is a presentation of NBC News, the world's largest broadcast news organization. for WMAQ-TV by NBC News Chicago, which is solely responsible for its content.